So here we are at our introduction to the RSpec testing tool. And before we start running any tests, I want to point out a couple of things that I had to do to get our environment set up to use RSpec. The first is that I had to edit the gem file. And if we scroll down to the group test section, I've added support for two gems here, RSpec Rails, which is some Rails-specific support that RSpec provides, and Zentest, which will allow us to keep uh, our tests running automatically so that anytime we change our source code, the relevant tests automatically get rerun. Now, as always, after adding some lines to the gem file, I had to run bundle install. Uh, I already did that, so I won't repeat it here. And the other thing that I had to do is I had to run Rails generate RSpec colon install. This is some one-time setup that creates the subdirectories in our app that RSpec is going to use. And again, I've done that offline, so I'm not going to do it here. Um, instead, here is the moviescontrollerspec.rb file, just as shown in the book. And you can see that I have three examples here, but none of them contains any code. They're just descriptions of the tests that we're going to write. Now, we can run these manually by using the rspec command. And I'm going to say, give me color output and pretty formatting. And rspec takes a few seconds to start up. Uh, once it starts up, the examples run very quickly. But in a minute, we're going to show how to get rid of that startup time and uh, amortize it over lots more tests. So you can see that RSpec tried to run these three examples. Uh, all three of them printed out in yellow, which means they're not yet implemented. Uh, red would be failing and green would be passing, but we don't actually have any test code yet. And sure enough, it says not yet implemented for all three tests. Now, we might want to give ourselves a helpful message reminding ourselves why it isn't yet implemented. So I'm going to add a do block here with a pending method that says uh, need to choose a name for the model method. And if I now save this file, we can manually run RSpec again. And we should see that the output is going to change. And instead of the generic not yet implemented message, we're going to see the pending message that uh, we just inserted into our test code. Now, you can already tell that running RSpec over and over again manually is pretty tedious. So here's a nice piece of automation that we've already installed. It's called AutoTest. We're just going to start it up. And what AutoTest will do is monitor as we make changes to either our tests or our source code. It will automatically notice those changes and rerun any tests that might be affected. So for example, uh, I could make one of my tests forcibly flunk as a reminder that we need to get this test finished. And we could remind ourselves that uh, this test is going to flunk because no template exists yet. So now, as soon as I save the file, you can see that AutoTest kind of woke up over here. And it's going to rerun any affected tests, which in this case is the only three that we have. And sure enough, we still have these two tests being unimplemented, but we've got a red uh, failure message here. And all it did was output the flunk message that I provided. So what have we seen here? We could run the RSpec tool manually and give it a specific file name, like moviescontrollerspec.rb. Or uh, more productively, we could run the auto test tool. And then whenever we make changes, either to our test code or our application code, all of the affected tests will automatically get rerun. And we can just kind of keep half an eye on the window where auto test is running. Whenever we see some red out of the corner of our eye, that's a signal that we've broken something and it's time to go get it fixed.